Hey everybody, this is Captain Kimo, and in this video I am going to go over the fundamentals of Photomatix Pro 4.1. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, load our exposures. Um, I'm going to load three exposures. Um, you can either load your exposure with the load bracketed photos button, or you can just drag and drop the exposures that you want to uh, create an HDR image with just drag and drop it right into the Photomatix window. Alright, so before we get started, let me show you the exposures that we're going to be using for this tutorial. In this uh, this first picture here is our original exposure. You can see um, parts of the sky is blown out and in the shadows uh, some of the detail is very dark. Alright, so in this next image, this is our underexposed photo. Uh, in this photo, we're going to use the um, the colors in the sky where the highlights were blown out from the original exposure. We're going to use that to bring back the details in that area. In this last image, this is the overexposed image. And what we're going to do with this photo is bring out the detail in the foreground or in the shadows. Now we're back in the Photomatix window. Um, I'm going to drag and drop my photos into the Photomatix window to load it. You can also load your exposure by clicking on the load bracketed photos button and just hit browse and find your exposures. And once you do that, just uh, go ahead and hit the OK button. The pre-processing options menu should now pop up. For align source images, we won't need to worry about that because my image doesn't need to be aligned. I shot it on a tripod and there's no shifting in any way. I suggest that uh, if you have an image that you think might need aligning, click on that and use by match features. Next we'll have remove ghost with automatically selected and detection on high. What remove ghost does is it eliminates any ghosting of the image. Let's say for instance uh, you take a photo on the street of a moving car well that car is going to be in a different spot in each exposure so what Photomax will do is pick the best exposure and remove the cars in the other exposure our next option is to reduce noise I like having this check because I like to remove as much noise as possible especially when we're dealing with HDR images they tend to produce quite a bit of noise the next option is to reduce chromatic abbreviation now I don't particularly like having this check it takes a little extra time to process the photo I'd rather do this in Lightroom or Photoshop so we'll leave that unchecked however if you do notice some chromatic aberration I recommend checking this if you don't have any other way of fixing it later once you have your pre-processing options selected go ahead and hit the OK button okay so once Photomatic finishes putting together your exposure you have three options in creating your HDR image you have detail enhancer you have exposure fusion and you have tone compressor detail enhancer is the primary one that I use to create my HDR photo With the detail enhancer you can um, pretty much produce a realistic or a dynamic image the other one I use is tone compressor I used to not use it I've been going for more realistic looks, so I've been using tone compressor and that has been able to give me um, the look that I'm trying to get with a more realistic HDR image the other way of creating HDR photo is by using exposure fusion and exposure fusion I use that for is to fill in blown out highlights especially for uh, nighttime images so in this tutorial I am only going to cover detail enhancer I'll do a separate tutorial covering exposure fusion and a detail compressor in a separate video so let's get started make sure you have tone mapping selected and detail enhancer selected I'm gonna go over all the options and sliders and tell you what they're there for and how I use them before we get started, let me go ahead and close the preset window. Normally I will start from the preset window and select one of the presets to start from. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to start from the default. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window out. And make it a little bigger so you can get a better idea or see what I'm doing. So the first slider is strength. Uh, what strength does is it, if you go all the way to the left here, um, it creates a more realistic image but 
what you get is you get your blown out highlights and no detail in the shadows. If I were to bring it all the way to the right, which is 100, um, you'll you'll get more dynamic range or you'll see you'll get more color and more detail in your sky and more detail. The next slider is color saturation. Color saturation is obvious. Um, if you want to decrease the color, you move it all the way to the left. And if you want to increase the saturation in your color, you want to move it all the way to the right. With photomatics, I like increasing the color. And when you increase the color in photomatics, it doesn't look crazy. It, it actually looks good. So that's one of the reasons I like using photomatics. It's mainly because of the way it handles color. Okay, so our third slider is luminosity. What luminosity does, it brightens up our image. So if I were to bring it all the way to the right, it'll brighten up the image. What it also does is bring out the detail in the shadows. If I were to bring it to the left here, it will darken the image. Uh, I usually keep mines all the way to the right. Detail contrast is our next slider. Um, what I like to do is I like to keep my slider next to luminosity. So whatever luminosity is, I like to keep detail contrast right about the same. Um, what detail contrast does is it increase the detail in your image. If you go all the way to the left here, you'll see that the image has less detail. So I usually like keeping mines around luminosity. Next you have a lighting adjustments slider. Now you have two options for this um, to adjust the value. You can click on lighting effects mode which then gives you five different options to choose from and this makes it a little easier than if you were to check the lighting effects mode off which you just get a slider uh, when you have it checked you just have five options um, now you can use these options to either make a surreal looking image or you can make a natural image the only bad thing about lighting adjustment is that you only have five options whereas in lighting adjustments with the slider you can pretty much fine-tune your adjustments now if you want it surreal or very dynamic you go all the way to the left here and if you want more natural HDR you go all the way to the right now if you want a very surreal looking image I would recommend using lighting effects and clicking on surreal plus but for this image I like it dynamic but I don't like it surreal so I'm gonna click on lighting effects mode off and I'm just gonna bring it all the way to the left next we're gonna move into our next batch of options which is show more options right here click on it and what we have is smooth highlights white point black point gamma and temperature so let's start with smooth highlights what smooth highlight does is it smooths out the bright areas of your your image um, for a landscape photo what that would normally be is the sky so if I were to move this all the way to the right you'll notice that the sky will or the bright areas of the sky will be smooth but it'll also be brighter for this image we'll keep smooth highlights down to zero next we have white point white point brightens up the uh, highlights of your image so if you were to move it all the way to the right all the highlights get brighter now I don't particularly like this image being too bright so I'm gonna drop it back down by moving the slider to the left I'm gonna bring it back down to right or about there black point is our next option and what black point does is it darkens up the shadow or the darkest areas of our image it'll darken it even further so if I were to move black point all the way to the right, it will darken up all our shadows. Now that's a little much for this image, but I do like adding some black point to my photo just to give it a little bit of contrast and usually right around 0.1% is usually good for me. Next we have gamma. What gamma does is affects the overall um, brightness and darkness of your image. So if you want to make your image brighter, you move lighter there all the way to the right. And if you want to make it darker, you move it to the left. Now I like uh, the gamma right around where it originally was, was about 1. So I'm just going to type in 1 and put it right back to its original spot. Now here's a quick tip. Uh, white point only affects the bright areas of your image. Black point only affects the shadows in your image, and gamma basically affects your overall image.
Now, the results from gamma will depend on where your uh, points are, are in your white point and your black point. So keep that in mind when you're adjusting your gamma. Okay, so the last slider under more options is temperature. Temperature is pretty straightforward. It either makes your image cooler or it makes it warmer. If you want your image to be cooler, you move it to the left. And if you want your image to be warmer, you move it to the right. Now, I don't want to make any adjustment to the temperature, so I'm just going to move it right back to zero. Our last set of options is underneath our advanced options, which is right here. I'll go ahead and click that down to pull up micro smoothing, saturation highlights, saturation shadows, shadow smoothness, and shadow clipping. The first slider under advanced option is micro smoothing. Uh, what micro smoothing is for is to create more intensity or to give your image a more smooth look. If you were to move it all the way to the right, your image would be a lot smoother, it'll have less contrast, and it'll be brighter. Now, if you were to move it to the left, your image will be much more dynamic. It'll have a lot more intensity and it'll be a lot more grungy. So for this, I prefer it to be right around where it was, which was about two. We're going to play around with it a little bit here. Um, yeah, right about three is good for me. The second slider under advanced option is saturation highlight. Now saturation highlight affects the saturation in your bright areas. If you were to move it to the left here, you'll desaturate basically everything in the sky. If you were to move it to the right, you'll increase the saturation. Now you won't see any, any difference between 0 and 10 because we blasted the saturation or the color saturation up to 100. So if I were to move this down to let's say 50 and now we were to if we were to move this the saturation highlights you'll see it makes an effect so keep that in mind when you're doing this that uh, if your color saturation is already increased uh, most likely your saturation highlights won't make any effect the next slider is saturation shadows now saturation shadows does the same thing as saturation highlights only saturation shadows as you can guess only affects the shadow so if I were to move it to the left it will reduce all the colors in the foreground or in the shadowy area and if I were to move it to the right to a 10 um, it'll increase all the colors in the shadows of course here it won't have any effect because our saturation or our color saturation is at 100 so I'm just gonna move this back to zero the last slider that I'm going to go over is shadow smoothness. Now what shadow smoothness does is it brings back the shadow in your image. Now if I were to move it all the way to the right here to 100, nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because smooth highlights is at zero. And that's really the reason I left smooth highlights at zero is to show you this because this is important. You need a value of at least one to use shadow smoothness. So now that we can use shadow smoothness, I'm going to adjust it and I like to give my image just a little bit of its natural shadow. Uh, if you were to move it all the way to the right, you basically you, you, you just get all that detail in your shadow. And to me that's kind of un, unnatural, but it does give your image a more dynamic look. But for this photo, I'm going to give the shadow value about a 20. Okay, so the last two options underneath the advanced options, shadow clipping and 360 image, you don't need to worry about. I don't ever use those options, and I can't see you ever using them, so it's two less things that you need to concern yourself with. Okay, so the next batch of options here is reset. You have reset here. You can click on the default button, which will take you to the default state where we started from. This is the undo button. You can click on this to go back to your previous state. And this is the redo button. So if you want to go back to the your, your state beforehand, you can click on that. But we're going to go back to our previous state. Under the presets drop-down menu here, you can access all your presets here. You can also save your presets or load presets that you already have in the folder. You can 
save the preset that we just did here and use it for later and that's what I usually do once you get done processing or playing with your settings in Photomatics click the process button and let Photomatics create your HDR image so you're pretty much done here all you need to do is save your image you can go to file save as and you have your option of saving as a 16-bit, 8-bit, or JPEG image. Um, I used to save it as a 16-bit, but uh, it's been just bogging down my computer, so now I save it as an 8-bit TIFF. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. Let's take a final look at our HDR image, so I can show you the before and after. This is the HDR photo, and this is our regular exposure. And then we use the underexposure for the sky and the overexposure we use the foreground. So this is our original exposure and this is our HDR image. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. But most importantly, don't forget to visit CaptainChemo.com. There you'll see some of my latest HDR photos along with my other HDR videos.